All right, let's talk about arrays. In JavaScript, we can declare an array like this. Now, the thing about JavaScript arrays is that each element can be of different type. So here we can have two numbers followed by a string. And this is totally valid JavaScript code because JavaScript arrays are dynamic, so each element can be of different type. But what if we pass this array to a function that expects a list of numbers? Then the third element is going to cause some issue, right? This is where we use TypeScript. So we can explicitly apply a type annotation here and say numbers is a number array. Now we see the error immediately at compile time. So let's fix it. Good. Now, in this particular case, we don't even have to apply the type annotation because every element in this list is a number. So if you remove the type annotation, the compiler can still infer or guess the type of this variable. Great. But what if we had an empty array here? Look, now the type of this variable is any array, which is something we should avoid. With any arrays, again, we can have a mix of different types. So the first element can be a number. The second element can be of a different type, like a string or a boolean. So if you want to use an empty array, you have to explicitly apply a type annotation here. Let's say number array. Now the third line is invalid. So let's delete it. Now, let me show you another cool benefit of using TypeScript, and that is code completion or IntelliSense. So if you type numbers that for each and pass an arrow function here, like n goes to, and then type n period, over here, we can see all the properties and methods of number objects. Because our editor knows the type of n, it offers code completion. So we can see all the methods of number objects. This is very useful. It's a great productivity boosting feature. We don't get this with plain JavaScript, right? So that's another benefit of using TypeScript. That's all about the arrays. Next, we're going to talk about tuples.